If you had a million dollars, you'd probably think you're financially free. Or maybe you keep thinking that that high paying job you've been wanting will solve all your problems. The problem with thinking this is that you're assuming that having a lot of money is what leads to financial freedom. And it doesn't. In fact, you can have a lot of money and still be poor. You can have a lot of money and still not be free. You can have that high paying job and still be living paycheck to paycheck. That's why we always hear about NFL players or celebrities that end up broke. Why? Because they don't have financial education. Personal finance is about managing your money so you can meet your financial goals. Rich Dad defines personal finance as the path to financial freedom. Financial freedom means something different for everyone. It could mean having your dream house, having enough money for your kids to go to college, or retiring early. I'm your host, Alexandra gonzalez Ganoza, and this is where your financial freedom begins. When it comes to personal finance, there are two different mindsets. One makes you rich, and the other one makes you poor. Your mindset determines your habits, and those habits create either your poor reality or your rich reality. And we've discussed this in past episodes that when it comes to financial freedom, saving is a losing strategy. It's important to remember that cash is simply a currency. For it to bring any value at all, it needs to move into something else. If it's moving, if it's sorry, if it stops moving, it dies. It's worthless every day. So many people think that putting money into a savings account that accrues interest is a form of investing, but that's because we've been taught to think this way. And unfortunately, the interest received can be offset or even eroded by inflation. For that reason, saving money means you're not growing your money at all. Your money loses value as inflation outpaces your gains. That's why to be rich, you have to budget like the rich. Building and maintaining a budget is an essential element of personal finance success. And it's the roadmap for your finances. Most financial experts make budgeting all about balancing your income and your expenses. But at Rich Dad, we prefer to talk about budgeting as a way to generate more income and expand your means. For most people who are in the middle class, a budget is a way of taking your income amount, your salary, and planning your expenses based on that income, right? It's a fairly straightforward process. You simply take your expected expenses based on past trends trends, and match them up to your known income. And if there's a shortage, you cut expenses. If there's a surplus, you decide what you want to do with that extra, extra money. And usually that extra money is spent on something like a vacation, a new car, which means money that could be working for you is now making you work for a liability. This is the middle class mentality, the cash flowing habits of a middle class person. Again, saving is losing. So if saving is losing, how do you win? (laughs) Well, that starts by looking at how you budget. Poor dad would say, live below your means. And rich dad would say, expand your means. Poor dad says, I can't afford it. And rich dad says, how can I afford it? Poor dad's budget focused on cutting expenses to meet his income. It was his priority to pay everyone else first and then enjoy what was left, if any. Rich dad's budget focused on increasing income. It was important that he paid himself first and then took care of expenses. Most people use their budget as a plan to become poor or middle class rather than to become rich. Rich Dad said, my budget is a plan to become rich. So today, let's create your budget to become rich. Let's explore the four budgeting tips of the rich. One of Rich Dad's most important lesson was, you have to make a surplus an expense. And I know that sounds confusing, but what he was referring to is the idea that most people view a surplus as an asset and perpetuate that concept by placing their extra cash in the bank or spending it on liabilities. Instead of viewing extra money as an asset, Rich Dad viewed it as an expense in the form of charity, investing, and saving. Most people want to give to charity. They want to invest in assets and save money. But the problem is that they view it as something they do after they've paid their expenses. 
Rich Dad, however, made these things expenses in his budget and made them a priority. This is how you break the cycle of your middle class habits. This is what we mean when we say pay yourself first. This is key to understanding how to save money to actually get rich. Rich people budget savings not as an investment or a means to get rich, but instead as a hedge to protect themselves should the need arise that they can't liquidate their assets quickly enough. Also, as a bonus tip here, you should consider saving about six months of living expenses at any given time. And that's honestly a really good rule to live by forever. (laughs) For tip number two, let's talk about your expense column. Have you guys ever heard Robert Kiyosaki say, once you enter the real world, you soon discover that bankers don't care about your grades. Rather, they are only interested in your financial report card. Well, let's talk about your financial report card. The answer can be found in your personal finance statement. The income section of an income statement is where you place every source of income you make. Earned income, which comes from your paychecks, your tips, your wages. Um, Portfolio income, which is the dividends from stocks. And passive income, which is the cash flow from your real estate. Your expense column, however, is where you list everything you pay for each month, like your mortgage, your car, and insurance payments. To predict your financial future, just look at your expense column. When you look at most people's expense column, it's filled and littered with payments to other people and liabilities. In each case, expenses don't go towards anything that will make money and only things that permanently take money out of your pocket. As you evaluate your budget for this year, take a look at your expense column. What does it say about you? If it's filled with liabilities and you don't have any assets at all, then you're going to find it really difficult to get rich. And the thing is, most budgeting tools can help you get a better understanding of your finances by teaching you to list your monthly income and expenses using a budgeting template or, I don't know, a spreadsheet. And this is a great start, but your income statement only shows you half of your financial picture. To understand your entire financial picture, you need to also understand your assets compared to your liabilities. An easy way to understand this is that an asset is anything that puts money in your pocket, regardless of whether you work for it or not. Passive income from assets are things like dividends from a stock, rental income from a real estate investment, or residuals earned from online course sales. These are all different forms of assets. A liability, on the other hand, is anything that takes money out of your pocket. So go through that list of your liabilities and see what's taking money out of your pocket. And contrary to popular belief, your home is not an asset. It's a liability. Not only do you have the mortgage to eventually pay off, but the property taxes, the utilities and maintenance, and these will always be taking money out of your pocket while giving you absolutely no passive income on a monthly basis. The key and what makes the rich richer is to acquire assets that pay for your liabilities. Every time you want a liability, think to yourself that you first need to find the asset to pay for the liability. I promise you that's when your true wealth will happen. And that's tip number three. You use your assets to pay for your liabilities. When you increase your assets, you increase your investments like real estate And it then increases your monthly cash flow. And then you can purchase that luxury item you've been wanting and pay for your liabilities. That's when you break the cycle. That's when you become financially free. And if you want a nice car, you invest money until the asset produces the cash flow required to purchase that car. Then you'll have a nice car and a really good asset. (laughs) This is why paying yourself first in, in your budget is the most important thing you can do to get rich. Being able to execute these first three tips I talked about on budgeting means building a mindset of resiliency, which is what prepares you for my next tip. Tip number four, don't save, spend to get rich. Most people stop spending on charity, investing, and saving when times get tough. That's not how rich people budget. 
the rich figure out ways to make more money by spending more money on assets, even when times are tough. Even when there's talk about an upcoming recession, they keep spending. By pushing through those hard times, you develop a mentality that enables you to make more money no matter what the circumstances are. That'll just make you richer than you ever imagined. Money makes more money. And so if you invest your money, share it with charity, and spend it on assets, you keep it moving and it'll force you to find a way to create more cash flow for yourself. Even when Robert and Kim began their businesses over three decades ago, they were one million in debt, but they didn't give up and settle for a middle-class life. The temporary pain they experienced was necessary for them to increase their financial education, spend money on acquiring assets, and achieve their goal of financial freedom. It took them less than one decade to achieve this financial freedom, all because they added pressure on themselves And so they were forced to find a way to have enough passive income flowing into their pockets each month that covered their expenses. And that's when they knew they were financially free. You need to have that mentality that you will make more money no matter what, no matter the circumstances. Your eyes, thoughts, and habits need to be set on one thing, and that's your financial freedom. And as I wrap up today's episode, I want to let you guys know about Rich Dad's new course they just developed called Manage Your Money. And if you need help with your budget and personal finances, go ahead and go check it out. It's all online and you can do it at your own pace. Now is the time to start 2024 on the right financial foot. Go to the link in the description if you want to access it. I'll leave it there for you guys. And thank you to everyone who's been a part of our 2023 Here's to all the goals you've reached this year and the even bigger goals you will be accomplishing in 2024. I'll see you next year. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.